Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be playing Protect the House version 6.8 on Insane Difficulty. At the start of the game I recommend selecting the Commander Hero, and then immediately heading to the top right of the map so that you can create some human caches. The human cache will produce 2 gold every 8 seconds, and it can be upgraded 9 more times, eventually giving you significantly more gold. On your way to the top right, make sure you stop by this shop, where you can pick up a few free items to boost your DPS by 12. As far as abilities go, most of them are all fine. For level 1, I usually like to get the Thorns ability, because that will reflect 10 damage into oncoming attackers, which will mean an enemy can hit you a maximum of one time, because the first wave only has about 9 or 8 health, so it'll instantly kill them. See, as we just saw there. So I had thorns, they both died instantly. At the house in the middle, I just researched spike walls. The reason for that is because the spiked walls upgrade will make it so any oncoming attacker will receive the reflection damage from the spike before their attack goes through, which means the house is essentially invulnerable for the first wave. This is doubly useful because it also means that the house will get a lot of income which can be used to get you the Voluntarism upgrade along with a couple of others. One upgrade I just researched is called Weather Satellite. Weather Satellite makes it so you can be revived every minute if you die near the house. So if I were to die right here, which might very well happen in the next wave or two, this will revive me, and then after one minute it can revive me again. That's an extremely important ability. Aside from that, the Voluntarism upgrade is really useful, because it makes it so a percentage of your donations is also given to you as EXP. So if you donate 100 gold right now, I would get 25% EXP. And eventually, we'll be able to upgrade that to a much higher amount, such as 200% back as EXP. So I donate 5,000 gold, and suddenly I just got 10,000 EXP, which is enough to skyrocket you through several levels. Now, as you start to get gold from killing units, it's very important that you upgrade your human caches. So I just upgraded my human caches from level 1 to 2, and then another one from 2 to 3. The cost usually doubles every single upgrade, so that'll give you a general sense of how much it will cost you. As far as abilities go, now that I have a few points, I recommend getting enough levels of Thorn Aura to instantly kill any attacker. So for now, that just means one additional point. And then also, I like to get a lot of points into the armor aura, because then you won't die as quickly. The units do 8 damage, but since your health is so low, that means you'll still die pretty quickly. And yeah, so now my weather satellite's on cooldown, which is just fine, it doesn't cost me anything, and I'll be able to be revived again in a minute. Now, what this does mean is it's pretty important that I don't not die next wave or else I'll have some downtime. If you guys like my videos, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to play some games with me, I do live streams every Saturday, so make sure you have your notifications set to all to be notified for exactly when those begin. Okay, I'm going to get another level of Thorns Aura here, boosting it from 20 to 30 just to really make sure I have plenty of DPS. The Aura also affects the house but the house affecting aura does not kill the units preemptively, so it's not quite as useful. Looks like it's going pretty well so far. If too many units group up around you, you can always use the war stomp, which will pretty much kill all of them instantly. Okay, we have 130 gold, now's a good time to start making our first towers. I'm going to put up 9 towers here and upgrade them all into the Hero Tower. The Hero Tower is a very powerful tower. It does 70 damage, and it only costs 30 gold to make when you factor in the starting 10 gold cost of the tower. And yeah, so the damage is just insane. To compensate, it has a slow attack speed, but we'll be able to upgrade that at our hidden mushroom laboratory to increase the attack speed. It starts at 50 gold and gradually increases in cost over time. If I do end up losing a couple of hero towers here, it's not a big deal, because as I just mentioned, they're only 30 gold to make, and we have 300, so pretty easy to replace them. 
Let's get another couple levels of Defense Matrix. I'm also going to put a point into Sentry Calibration. Sentry Calibration is good for waves where you're getting overwhelmed and you just want to have some extra protection to keep the house alive. Let's get another group of nine towers over here on the left. And this time, I'm also going to put some repair bots up. The repair bots can be... Well, they do what you'd expect. They repair the tower. Eventually, we'll be adding more repair bots, but due to financial constraints, we're just going to do two repair bots for the moment. Let's also... Right, looks like I don't quite have time to get another repair bot up just yet. Attackers are up to 19 HP, so I'm going to get one more level of spiked walls. Yeah, just in case I do die again, that'll mean the house doesn't die as well. And yeah, it looks like most of my defenses at the bottom right are probably going to die. I'm going to get my human cache upgraded to level 5. And yeah, this spot is... the enemies will never attack it, so you don't need to worry about those human caches dying. There are a couple of other spots you can use as well. The left side of the map over here, you can also put some invulnerable house uh, human complete. caches or really any structure if you have something else work you want complete. to make work complete okay, I'm going to sell the soul of skeleton king because I don't want to switch my hero I'm just going to kill these two items because we need the space Our town is under work complete. Work complete. and yeah so the spikes also affect air units because I think these are melee air units so the house is still invulnerable right now The anti-air tower that I just made would be really important in a few waves because eventually invisible units will be coming and anti-air towers have built-in invisibility detection. Okay, this time I'm going to get some towers up on the right. If it looks like I am slightly misplaced it, I did not. Unfortunately, there's just some collision here for whatever reason, so you can't get a good-looking design going. And one more invisibility detection. It's very important that you have your towers up by this wave, which I believe is 9, because this one you'll be attacked by ranged units, and the ranged units are invulnerable to the spiked walls because they only affect melee attackers. So you really need the extra assistance from the towers or else you just won't be able to kill the units in time. Go ahead and get the left up. And let's also get a few attack speed upgrades. In fact, uh, we can just hold off on the left towers for the moment. The attack speed upgrades are really important because for the relatively low cost, it's kind of like tripling your tower's DPS eventually. Like right now, we've just increased the attack speed by 100%, which Research means these towers are essentially two times stronger. Went from slow speed to fast. And there's still 15 more attack speed upgrades remaining, so you can kind of imagine how powerful it's going to get later on. Units are still at 19 HP, so we don't need to get another level of spiked walls. So instead, I'm going to put the house's gold into Voluntarism. Strangely, despite the fact that I had plenty of spike damage, the units were able to do damage still, which leads me to believe their armor must have reduced the reflected damage, and that is why it got through. So I guess if you were worried, it's probably about time to get one more level of spikes. I'm going to get another cluster of nine towers up. Okay, now let's head back to the right. This cluster will get most, will get every unit from the left and some of the units from the top, but it won't get all of them, so just keep that in mind. Getting some more armor. At this point, I don't think there's too much of a need to keep getting the thorns upgrade, so I'm going to start putting it into concussive bullets. You can also get an armor upgrade for your tower, which will increase the armor by one per upgrade. It's a useful way to slightly boost the durability, but ultimately I find improving the attack speed tends to be more effective. Okay, 
Here's the Invis wave, so it's very important that you get your anti-air towers up. But if you didn't, you can also place the sentry wards that we grabbed from this building earlier, and that will provide you with detection as well. But yeah, the Invis waves all have really low HP, so as long as you have the detection, you're going to be just fine. Which means this is also a good wave to get some extra human cash upgrades in, because you probably won't need very many defense upgrades. Okay, time to rebuild the bottom right. Okay, let's try to move these items. Thermal shield's not bad, but I don't think I need it. Actually, you know what? I will take it anyway, just because the other item that I just dropped was pretty useless. It was Cadgar's Pipe, which provides you with a little bit of mana regeneration. But since I use basically no mana, it's not necessary. Okay, time for more tower attack speed. I'm also going to get a level of living walls at the house. That'll give it 1 HP regen per upgrade, so right now it has 1 HP per second coming back. That basically just means I don't have to spend the time to repair it. I'm going to try to get my towers up to 10 attack speed upgrades now. Research complete. And in a moment, we'll have enough gold to get another human cache, so let's do that now. Work complete. And the hero towers can be upgraded, but the only upgrade that'll actually be useful for us is at level 7, and we don't quite have the money to get that just yet, so there's no rush. The reason why level 7 is useful is because each three levels the human tower gets new abilities, so at level 4 it gets access to crit, but at level 7 it gets access to evasion, which is useful, but yeah, we just don't have the money. What level of human cash is this? Okay, that's correct. Research complete. Research complete. I guess we can start getting a couple of Research hero tower complete. upgrades, try to get them up to level 2. As you can see, it just drains the money really quickly. A couple of upgrades that I'll point out in the Disguise Laboratory that are useful are the Hero Range upgrade, the Rapid Fire upgrade, and the tower range upgrade. All the rest are either too cost ineffective or literally useless. The enhanced vision upgrade just doesn't even work, so you'd be spending money for nothing. I don't... I just clicked the wrong one. Did I already... okay. I guess I finished the hero armor upgrade. You can only get 10 levels of hero armor, so I maxed it out. And yeah, 10 levels that'll get you around 49% reduction, and on top of that, when your hero tower is upgraded, it will naturally get some more armor as well. This game has 35 waves. Uh, I'll have to double check, but I think we're around 15 right now, which means we're at a little less than the halfway point. Yep, it was exactly 15. What would you ask of me? Okay, let's get these guys up to level 4. And yeah, double-clicking them will select all units of the same type, which is why some of the other sides are getting upgraded at the same time, which is good. I see a good item here, the Wisp Essence. I'm going to ditch the Black Gunpowder, because the 6 damage boost is pretty minimal, uh, relative to my base damage. I'm going to replace it with Wisp Essence, which gives us 120 movement speed. As I'm sure you observed earlier, we move really slowly in this game, so any item that gives us more movement speed is quite valuable. Now is also a good time to start incorporating a few extra repair towers. The cost is only 25, so you should be able to squeeze in pretty much as many as you have space for. In a moment, we'll be able to get another level of human cash. You can also upgrade the repair towers, but uh, to me it seems like the repair speed pretty much remains the same at all levels, so that's up to you if you want to invest in it. And yeah. So around this time, the flying units from the top can be a little bit dangerous on this wave, 
So if your hero is under geared, it's very important that you have some towers prepared at the top. In my case, I found some pretty good items, so it's a non-issue. But I am still going to get rid of these trees and get some towers up, because it is about time to do so anyway. We're just going to do more or less the same design, nine towers, some repair bots. The trees will regrow, which can make this a little bit annoying to maintain. Actually, I guess since I made the space for it, I'll just make four, or, yeah, four by three instead of three by three. Cost difference is pretty much irrelevant. And then I guess we'll fill that back in while we have time. And now the trees are back. The trees will provide some protection, but uh, don't expect these towers to survive forever because there are ranged units and they will kill the towers. I'm going to put some barricades up here that will hopefully provide vision for these towers, uh, but they'll probably die pretty soon. I am not afraid. Okay, time to shoot a couple more items that we don't want here. And I see another item that I like, so I'm going to ditch the black gunpowder and grab the battle drums. Oh wait, never mind. This is not the item that I was thinking of. Uh, the item I was hoping for was the movement speed drums, but this is the 10% damage drums. The enemies only have 26 health, so the damage bonus is useless. Okay. And that gets us to human cache level 8 for all human caches, which means now it's a good time to get the rest of my towers, or any of my towers, up to level 7. Okay. Just due to upgrade times, I'll probably stop here for the moment, because the enemy in the incoming dragon wave is about to arrive. If you do want to get some vision that won't be killed, you can place sentry wards, but they only last for one minute, which is a little bit annoying for this top zone. The good thing is, on wave 30, the game will kill those trees for us, just for uh, yeah. On wave 30, the trees are killed anyway, so that problem will eventually resolve itself. Research complete. Time to max out Voluntarism, which means we're getting 200% of our money invested back as EXP. I am yours. Work task is there. Upgrade complete. Upgrade complete. Is required. Work task Upgrade is complete. There. Here is the evasion that I had mentioned. 10% chance Upgrade to evade, complete. and it also gets a 15% bash chance, but because these towers will one-shot pretty much every single unit in the game, uh, with the exception of the final wave, the bash is almost always useless. And even on the final wave, while it isn't technically a one-shot, because we'll have nine towers attacking simultaneously, it will still kill the boss pretty much immediately. Oh, looks like we have an invis wave here, and the right side's invisibility detection tower somehow ended up dying. Oh, something I just did there that I guess is worth mentioning is around the map you can find little critters. If you kill the critters, they will drop an acorn, and the acorn can be used to get a random item. Now this is not too relevant, because the random items will have no impact on your abilities to succeed, so I usually don't waste any time killing the random critters. Let's get some more repairmen up at the top. And I'm not sure if my heroes one by one. Okay, he is. Cool. So this will work. Work complete. Our town is under attack. Work complete. Work complete. And that will be as good as it gets. Work complete. Work complete. So what is this item? Increases all attributes by three. Also exempts the carrier from the gold penalty when dying. I mean that's somewhat useful. I actually did not know there was a gold penalty for dying. So that's nice. Enemies are up to 23 life, which means our 30 Thorns aura would technically be sufficient, if not for armor. Now, factoring in the armor, I'm, I'll have to double check when I can find one that's still alive. Well, 29 armor, do I have anything similar to that? Well, it's at least 50% damage reduction. Let's just assume it's 70. That means we would want... Well, 70% reduction, so multiply it by 0.3. 
So 80 times 0.3 is probably about what we need. We'll just max out Thorn's Aura. And we also just about have enough money to get another level 9 human cash. Yeah, let's use the money I invested in donations to uh, start completing the upgrades to the house. The first one I'm going to prioritize is the house HP upgrade. That does pretty much what you'd expect. It increases the HP of the house. I don't think it increases the armor, but we'll double check. So right now it's at 6, and when I upgrade it, it is at... Uh, also 6. Yeah. So it's purely HP. At your call. Research complete. Upgrade complete. And most likely the house will never even get attacked, but it is still good to have a, a precaution just in case you miss something. If the house ever dies, you instantly lose the game, so there's no chance to recover. Research complete. So we've now maxed out the house, giving it a grand total of 950 HP. The next upgrade I'm going to get is the resource expansion upgrade. The first level of it is completely useless, it gives the trees near the house a 20% chance to drop 10 gold, but the later upgrades are quite useful, which I'll be showing off right now. So this is where it starts to get useful. It allows heroes to pick up any items from any distance by right clicking, and now the pr great upgrade is the current one. It allows heroes to purchase items from any distance. So that means that this tome shop, which contains really cheap tomes, we can purchase from anywhere. Right now, I could start purchasing some in tomes of strength to boost my hero's strength. But we don't... I guess we can put a little bit in. Uh, I recommend, it when purchasing these tomes, to use an auto-clicker, or else you'll have to click thousands of times with how much money you have. So I'll probably put in, like, 3,000 worth of gold. And yeah, just imagine how long that would have taken if I was clicking those manually. Like, here's just a basic idea. Like 10 times longer, <laughs> maybe more. And of course, this is a lot of tedious clicking. Okay, so 9,000, we'll wait a little bit, and then we'll be able to get the level 10 human cash, which will max it out. The maximum level will give us 1,024 gold every 8 seconds. There's no limits to the amount of human caches that you can have, so if you want to have 10, you could try doing that. Uh, but while that is true that there's no limit, there is a limit to the amount of space that you can fit in the top right without zombies attacking it. And I think three is the most you can fit here, but uh, you can always test that out yourself to see what the true limit is. From what I saw earlier, the units on the left tend to come down here, which should mean that if you had some buildings over here it would be fine. I'm not sure where the units spawn on the right though. So it's possible you might be able to yeah, have like a little rectangle. I'm also going to pick up some agility tones. These will be useful for a little bit of attack speed, but mostly the armor. So I just boosted my damage reduction to 75%. So to give you an idea of how durable I am now, I'll go and tank some incoming enemies just for fun. Right now I'm taking like 20 damage of the 40 they're doing, which is pretty solid. Now the one thing that would make us completely, well, we're already essentially invulnerable, especially when we get some more tomes, but something that would make it even more insane is if there was a lifesteal item. But as far as I know, I don't think there is a lifesteal item in this game. Let's double check. Um, oh, here we go. Blood Charm, 2% lifesteal. So we have 200 damage, so 1% of that would be... Two? Okay, yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> and that's going to be pretty unnoticeable. So I'm not going to bother with that. But yeah, we're not at any risk of dying anyway. That'd be more so, like, if there was a 50% lifesteal item and it, you could get it in the first few minutes of the game, it would be really good. But at this phase, not needed. Looks like the right needs a new invis tower. I think there's one more invis wave remaining in the game. I guess, yeah, units from the top must just be killing this. So I'm going to surround the invis, or the detection tower with more repair bots. They probably won't repair the tower in time, but they might just absorb the hits entirely. 
All right. We now have three level 10 human caches, which means 3,000 gold per 8 seconds. And now that we're at wave 30 of 35, the trees were all destroyed, but these units can now see the uh, incoming waves, so it should send aggro more in that direction. It's also making me realize I somehow missed a bunch of towers here in the upgrading process. Let's see if there's any other upgrades to get. The house armor upgrade, and the hero range upgrade, tower attack speed. Actually, there were several upgrades Reset that I still need to finish. All of which are pretty optional, to be honest, but uh, we'll still pick them up anyway. Research complete. Research complete. Yes, Lord. Research complete. Okay. A couple more hero towers. We can also start upgrading our level 7 hero towers to level 10s. I'll give it a little bit of extra HP and a little bit of extra damage. At your call. In total, yeah, let's take a look here. Level 10 versus 7 gave it like 20 HP and 20 damage. So, yeah, not huge, but we do have the money now. So there's no reason not to. We could also start upgrading the repair bots, but I'm just not even going to bother with that. Is there danger? Task is there. Upgrade complete. Yes, Our Lord. Town is Upgrade complete. Upgrade complete. Upgrade yeah, at the house, you could invest, but I don't think there's any level of spiked walls that would make it invulnerable to the final wave, because the final wave does... I have to double check, but I think the final wave has like 800 HP, which, while that isn't much health for our towers, is a lot of health relative to how little damage is reflected. Research complete. Okay, so tower attack speed's now maxed out. Hero range is maxed out, which brought our hero from 525 range to 725. There's only 10 upgrades of hero range, so it can increase any hero's range by 200. Which is nice, but... It's not going to make a low-ranged hero feel very good, because 450 range is still low, and 200 is also low. Okay, just finished upgrading all of my DPS towers. And now, optionally, you could get the long-range tower upgrade, which I guess I'll do. Research complete. Research complete. I'm also going to, instead of focusing on the armor upgrade for the house, I'm going to focus on the zombie training upgrade, which will summon a few zombies around the house for durability. This wave tends to be one where you might end up losing a tower or two, just because the towers have 100 HP, and these guys do 66 damage. Oh wait, oh, I guess I need to donate again. Uh, yeah, I guess that's fine. <laughs> 71,000 gold. Research I don't even complete. think there's 71,000 gold worth of upgrades available. Research complete. And yeah, Research so here's wave complete. 35. We could have invested that 70,000 gold into tomes, Research and complete. either way it doesn't make a difference because you're going to win. But yeah, so I guess we'll pick up a few last minute strength tomes. And yeah, the rate at which we get money, if we had like triple our current income, you could literally just gather tomes forever. So, we'll go and support our towers at the bottom left. The only reason why they're dying is because there's long-range siege cannons. Which, yeah, we have so much HP that their 40 damage is pretty comical at this point. Oh, accidentally killed them too quickly. I wanted to see how much HP they had. But yeah, so there you go. That is Protect the House on Insane Difficulty. It's really not too bad when you play in single player. This game suffers from a similar problem as Green Circle TD, where there's a finite amount of gold available in the map from unit kills, so when you're one player, all of your upgrades affect all of your buildings, which means it's all really cost effective, and you have, so one player would also have the same amount of gold as eight players, so just pretty much objectively, if you know what you're doing, this game is easier, and you can more reliably beat it with one player than multiple. Yeah. All in all though, Protect the House is pretty fun. If you like some base defense games, this one's worth a try. And yeah, if you guys like my videos, don't forget to like and subscribe. 
you want to play some games with me, I do a live stream every Saturday, so make sure you have your notifications set to all, and I'll see you guys next time.